morning church and welcome to the virtual Sunday service at Cal. The book of Ezra chapter 3 and verse 11 says, With praise and thanksgiving they sang to the Lord. He is good. His love endures forever. As we celebrate Thanksgiving Sunday, let's praise and thank Him for all that He's done in our lives. He deserves all the glory, all the honor and all the praise. So let's worship Him.
Thanksgiving Sunday, our responsive readings entitled God's Goodness, how fitting, isn't it? And taken from Psalm 107. So if you are able, would you stand with me and let's read this responsibly together. God's Goodness. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures, isn't it, beloved, forever and ever. Shall we pray together? Our loving Heavenly Father, our hearts are bursting, Lord, with uh, gratitude as we, even as we've started with the songs, Lord, uh, that remind us that we should be thankful, that we ought to be thanking you, to be able to look at the things that are around us, and even in the midst of this pandemic, to be able to say, Look what the Lord has done. And for that, Lord, we want to give you thanks. Help us, Lord, as we focus on you and turn our grateful hearts and thoughts towards you, Lord, to be able to bless your holy name. Oh, Master, it has been such a privilege to have you as our God and to know that we are your children. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we thank you that you have faithfully taken care of us provided for us, given us all that we have needed, taken, uh, watched over us, uh, looked out for us, prevented us from falling into traps and being prey to so many things that we ought not to. 
Thank you, Lord, for the way in which you have charted our life, for the purpose that you have placed in our hearts, and for all these things and many, many more. Lord, we want to give you thanks. And as we focus, Lord, on you and come before you with thankful hearts, Lord, accept our praise, accept our gratitude, accept our thanks, Lord, and fill us, Lord, with your spirit that we may just, let the effervescent presence of your spirit spill over, Lord, throughout this day uh, to everyone we meet, that they too would be in awe, Lord, of the things that you have done in our lives. And prompt us, Lord, to speak about these things, to let others know of how wonderful you have been in leading us. Master, thank you that we are ch children of yours, joint heirs with Christ. And Lord, as we go through the rest of this service, be honored in our midst and in every home, Lord, where people are gathered with grateful hearts, Lord, and to celebrate Thanksgiving with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we continue to worship the Lord and sing about his grace, grace that is greater than our sin. Grace that can fall. 
Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Shall we sing together, Like a river glorious. and our thanksgiving gifts to him our loving heavenly father we give you these gifts lord as just tokens of the many many blessings that you have poured into our lives but they also remind us lord of what a wonderful loving god you are one who provides for all our needs and truly you are you are jehovah jireh our provider and we give you thanks and invite your blessing on these offerings, these thanksgiving gifts. We ask, Lord, that along with it, you would give us the wisdom to know how to use it so that your name is lifted up. In that name, the name of Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Well, I hope you're excited today. Because I am always glad when Thanksgiving comes along. Because in the midst of all the things that we go through, right? We, we, especially in the midst of this pandemic and then vaccines, whether they're available, not available, have I taken them, not. All of these things we can get so consumed with and forget that there are 
a multitude of things that are in our lives, things that God has just been placing one after the other, just so that we can continue to be overcomers, continue to have some joy and peace and all of those things that make this journey of life uh, worth walking on. And I love Thanksgiving because it's one Sunday when we just say, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for the way in which you looked after us. And as the songwriter says, today I don't want anything. I just want to come before you and say thank you. Thank you. And the, the psalmist tells us, isn't it, in Psalm 104, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For it is a good thing to give thanks to the Almighty God. And so as we come into this service, we must come with thanksgiving and with praise. For it is a good thing to praise his holy name. And then 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me. In everything, beloved, wherever you are, you may be struggling, you may have had a bad week, you may be tight on finances, you may have come off bad or ill health, you could have loved ones in a hospital, you could have lost a loved one, but today, is a day that says in everything, in all of these things, give thanks to God, for that is His will, beloved, for you and for me. And so, today, as we kind of meditate on this whole idea of thanksgiving, I want to kind of put thanksgiving in the middle and then look at it from this different perspectives. We look at it first from its etymology or the etymology especially from, from the Greek and then we look at results of being thankful. And then just to be careful that we are a thankful people, we look at it and say, what would be contrasts of being thankful? And then what can we use or sources that will help us to be more thankful? And then we'll just look at scripture and say, let's see how people in the Bible were thankful and how they responded to what God was doing and the situations that they were in. So that's a road map for us this uh, morning. So first, the concept of thankfulness in the New Testament actually comes from two Greek words that have been put together. The first is charizomai, which comes from, of course, from charis, the word that means grace, isn't it? Charis, the grace gifts that we have often talked about. And the second is homologio, which is to confess or acknowledge. So when you put these together, these things of grace that God has given to us, to acknowledge them and to be able to confess that these are things that have happened in our life. Therefore, thankfulness is a, a mental or a verbal expression of not only one's acknowledging, acknowledgement and appreciation of God's person, that is his grace, His blessings, His sovereign work in your life and mine. But to be able to acknowledge that those things are happening in my life. So recognize it. Recognize that they are gifts of grace that God has given. And then acknowledge it. And in so acknowledging, be able to be thankful to God. And then the result. What happens when we are thankful. Well, thanksgiving turns our, or a thankful spirit turns our attention off of ourselves, isn't it? It takes our eyes and places it on God. And our focus then is on God. It helps us to see life through the perspective of, and listen to this, God's person, God's principles, His promises, His plans, His provision and purposes. I didn't put that alliteration together, but I borrowed it, but it's so beautiful, isn't it? That we focus on God's person, who He is. He's my God. He has redeemed me. He's done so many things for me. I worship Him. And then I imbibe His principles that He has given me in His Word. And then th strewn through Scripture are His promises that help me go through 
difficult times and challenging times. And then his plan that we are not bereft of a plan. We're just not here kind of walking around aimlessly. That there's a plan that God has for you and for me. And I, and I think to myself, I wish that the world knew that every person, every person in this world, God has a plan for them. Because if they knew that, they wouldn't give up on life. There would always be hope because the creator of the ends of the earth has placed a plan for every single person who walks this earth. Every single person. And therefore at no point can we say, I, this is no use. I mean, I'm just an aimless walking person. I have nothing to give in this situation. And then God's provisions and how we have received from him, isn't it, beloved? Seeing the way miraculously he has brought into our lives food on the table and clothes and other things he has provided for us. And we know that we don't have to read about Abraham being provided with the ram to save Isaac or the manna that fell in the wilderness for the children of Israel. Or Elijah getting the bread that came when he ran after Jezebel threatened him. Or any of the other stories. No. We can look at our own lives and see how many times God has given us what we have needed and provided for us. And then God's purposes for us. That all of us have a purpose. That we are not here by chance. That it's not that God just randomly threw us into this century, this age. Why couldn't I be, I be born, have been born after this pandemic or a, a couple of years before or miss this pandemic? No, God has a specific purpose why you and I are here during this time. And when we are thankful, we turn our gaze away from ourselves and concentrate on God then we see his person, his principles, his promises, his plans, his provision and his purposes. But as we move on, as we begin to see how important being thankful is, we need to also be aware that the opposite of being thankful are some things that we need to look at just to make sure that they are not sitting in our hearts. What can we have in our hearts that can negate or nullify a thankful spirit? Well, selfishness is one. The selfish person says, I deserve what comes to me. God and others ought to make me happy and fulfill my expectations. A selfish person. Secondly, thankfulness is the opposite of murmuring and pettiness. The thankless person is one who is focused on his or her own problems and thinks that they deserve better. Third, the area of pride, beloved. The thankless person who thinks that he or she deserves what he has or better than what he has. And then it is the opposite of self-trust. The thankless person tends to depend on his or her own merit and abilities and God gets pushed out of the equation and so we need to be careful that we are not, not selfish that we don't think that we deserve better or pride where we think yeah this is what I deserve or self-trust where we just look and say I'm the one who's going to handle the things in my life a thankful person on the other hand seeks to triumph and live by the grace of God rather than by one's own ingenuity. And then, I'd like for us to look at some of the sources of thanksgiving. And right at the beginning, spiritual understanding is so vital to a thankful heart. A word-filled life is a necessity. You and I need to live in the word because the word prompts us to be thankful. It is the source, beloved. As we looked even at the first couple of verses that we looked at, Psalm 100, that we start with being thankful. And in Thessalonians, 
in everything, we must be thankful. So the word reminds us always when we can get so caught up with the things around us to be thankful. And then God has designed our Christian life to be lived under the influence and the leading of his Holy Spirit. And thus a, a vital relationship with the Holy Spirit is essential. Where we give the Holy Spirit access and space and the ability to lead us. We submit to his will in every situation of our lives. And then that we remember that we are God's children. That we are constantly aware that as a child of God, I need to be thankful. Because now I have a heavenly father who has done so much for me. Who looks after me, looks out for me, provides for me. And I am his child. And so just the knowledge of being a child of God helps me to be thankful. And then to remember to what we have been called. To one body in which there should be peace. Recognizing the consequences of a thankful heart is just another source. And now let's look at examples of thankfulness from scripture. And the one that immediately comes to mind comes out of Luke's gospel, the 17th chapter, isn't it? Where we read about the 10 lepers who came to Jesus. And then we see in verse 15, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus shouting, praise God. He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done. And this man was a Samaritan. Thankful for restoration. He has been restored back not only to life because now he can join the rest of his community but also a restoration of good health. And we live in a world, isn't it beloved, where we forget to be thankful when God restores something to us. How often do we say thank you first to the Lord and then for the good gifts he has given and then to others who give up maybe a kind word or perform an act of kindness. And so the question for us today as we begin to look a little deeper into thankfulness to help kind of facilitate a greater heart of thanksgiving is to say what has God restored in you in this last week, in this last month, maybe this last year? What has he restored to you? Has he given you back your health? Were you in a place where you were deteriorating and God plucked you out of that place and gave you back health? Or maybe he restored a sick family member who you thought would not make it and yet that person is back with you and has brought so much of joy. Or maybe he has restored financial stability to you. You thought you were never going to make it. Yet you were going down and suddenly you're back on a stable footing. Or maybe it's a relationship that you thought this is not going to work. I've got to give up on this. And then God restored that relationship that seemed like it would never work. Thankful for restoration. Restoring good health to that Samaritan leper. And God has done the same in numerous ways for you and for me. So the whole idea of restoration prompts a thankful heart. But then when we look at another example of Daniel in 2 Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, 19 to 23, you remember King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and then he wants the people, you know, his wise men to uh, interpret it. And they say, tell us the dream. But he says, no, I'm not even going to tell you the dream. And they say, how can we interpret when, and then it, goes from bad to worse for all of them because he gets so angry. And then uh, Daniel comes to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and says, we've got to interpret this. And God allows them to know what the dream was. And so Daniel is so thankful for the revelation that has come from God. And so we thank God for the way in which he reveals things to us, isn't it? God uses his word to reveal his will to us. We can rest assured 
that scripture contains all we need to face, to deal with and endure every trial of life. God's word contains all we need for godly living. And we should be thankful for God's revelation through his word and spend time studying and reading what he has to say. Because God reveals his word to us in numerous ways as we look through his scripture. And so question again for us, what has he revealed to you, beloved? What has he revealed to you maybe about himself, a facet of himself that you never thought of before? And yet suddenly in maybe your deepest, darkest hour, you felt his presence come through his word that said maybe suddenly this line became a reality for you. I'll never leave you or forsake you. You realize God is present with me. And that revelation came through. Has he given you comfort during sad times as his word came to you, reminding you that he is the comforter? The one who can assuage your feelings. The one who has gone through everything that you are going through or have gone through and has come out. And therefore he understands what you're going through. Or maybe you're facing direction from the crossroads in your life and you're wondering, what do I do? And as you've been reading his word, there's come clarity that this is the way that you have to go. Walk ye in it. And you're thankful to God for revelation. I wonder whether we need to pause today and say, Lord, you continue to reveal things to me. Even though I don't take a moment to recognize it, I just say, oh, that's wonderful, and carry on. And yet it came from your word that you have revealed to us. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, who is how Jesus commended Peter, when he asked him, who do you say that I am? And Peter gave the right answer. And God continues, beloved, to reveal the things of his son in our situations, through his Holy Spirit, through his word, into our own lives, so that we can know how we need to go through difficult and different situations in our lives. So, restoration, revelation, and then we are thankful for our relationships. Paul writing in 1 Thessalonians and in other letters always he says, I give thanks to God for you. For each, writing to the church at Thessalonica, I'm so thankful for each one of you. To the church at Galatia, I'm so thankful. I give thanks to God for you. The church at Colossae, so thankful to God for you. He is so thankful. And he models how we too need to be thankful for the relationships that are around us, beloved. And so often we take them for granted, isn't it? We don't take a moment and say, well, I really want to thank you for the kind of person that you are to me. Thankful for friends, for church, family, colleagues, mentors, role models. I don't know, maybe doctors, teachers, hospital staff, nurses, shopkeepers who have been kind to you, your spouse, your children, mother, father, uncle, aunt, all of them. I, I remember many, many years ago when uh, I was 21, I think it was 21 or 22, and I was going to conduct the uh, choir. It was the... Uh, one of the best choirs here and I was given charge of it and it was a big moment for me. I was going to do the Holy City by Gaul to the full cantata and my parents were not here. They were traveling and uh, on the day that the concert was, I was missing them and then all of a sudden my aunt from Chennai called and said, I'm coming. I know how important this is for you. And she took a flight and came and she attended that concert. And I've never forgotten that. Just the kindness of family. And we have a myriad examples of such kindness, isn't it? In our families, 
given to us by our children, maybe our parents, fathers, mothers, aunts, whoever, who have modeled that kind of kindness in our lives. And so we need to be thankful today for relationships as well. Uh, many, many, I keep saying many, many years ago, and uh, giving away much of my age at the same time, I guess. But I think this was 1989, 90, when I was in Bible college. I remember listening to a song that had just come out and was making uh, headlines wherever it was being sung. It was such a beautiful song by Ray Bolts that just talked about thankfulness. And I want to read it to you. I would love to have played it for you, but I'm not sure about you know, copyright issues and all of that, whether it's allowed to be played and didn't want the service to get pulled. And so I want to just read these words to you. It says, I dreamed I went to heaven and you were there with me. We walked upon the streets of gold beside the crystal sea. We heard the angels singing that someone called your name. You turned and saw this young man and he was smiling as he came and he said, friend, you may not know me now. And then he said, but wait, you used to teach my Sunday school when I was only eight. And every week you would say a prayer before the class would start. And one day when you said that prayer, I asked Jesus in my heart, thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm so glad you gave. Then another man stood before you and said, Remember the time a missionary came to your church and his pictures made me cry. You didn't have much money, but you gave it anyway. Jesus took the gift you gave and that's why I'm here today. One by one they came far as the eye could see. Each life somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you had done, sacrifices made, unnoticed on the earth, in heaven now proclaimed. And then it goes on to say, you're not supposed to cry in heaven and all that. Then ends again by saying, thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. Maybe a good time to remember the many relationships that we had that have been such a blessing, isn't it, beloved? And but the top of the list is God himself for the ways in which he has blessed us, the way in which he has prompted people all around us to come to us in times. People who listen to him. And so fathers and mothers, children, uncles, all of them come with the prompting of God who says, my child needs something special today. Go and say this to them. Or go and be present. Or go and do this for them. Or just go and share something. Almighty God does so much for us. Then, finally, we've talked about restoration, we've talked about re revelation, relationships, and then how can we forget that we ought to be thankful for redemption, isn't it? The dictionary defines re re redemption as the action of saving or being saved from sin error or evil, the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment or clearing a debt. And we saw how redemption was used in the Old Testament, the book of Ruth, the story of Boaz who acted as the kinsman redeemer for uh, Ruth. Such a beautiful story, isn't it? And then we pushed further and said that Jesus is our own kinsman redeemer, that he has redeemed each one of us from the pit, from eternal separation, from hell. He has redeemed us from some of the things that we couldn't help ourselves. And he has brought us back to be his child again. And through that redemption has given us a future, has placed us on the right path, has shown us the purposes that God has for us. And then through redemption, we know that one day we will spend eternity with him. And so, beloved, we are thankful to God for redemption. Ephesians 1 7 says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance 
with the riches of God's grace. And then the psalmist reminds us in Psalm 119.9, He provided redemption for His people. He ordained His covenant forever. Holy and awesome is His name. And therefore, you bring in Psalm 107, 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. So, beloved, four examples for us as we think about Thanksgiving today. Restoration, revelation, relationships, and redemption. And much more. But we need to pause and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for the th ways in which you are. You have blessed us and continue to do so. You know, the choir has prepared this very beautiful song that Don Mohan and Paul Bellocci wrote many years ago. It says, I come before you today and there's just one thing that I want to say. Thank you. Lord, for all that you've done in my life, you took my darkness and gave me your light. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't, if you know this song, sing along with the choir and let's raise our voices in thankfulness to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and tell him we are so thankful for what you have done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Dearly beloved, in the midst of this pandemic, facing unprecedented times, God has not left us alone. His strength has been evident, His wisdom readily available and His grace ever present. And for that, we gratefully sing. I come before you today and there's just one thing that I want to say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord For all you've given to me For all the blessings that I cannot see
you stand for the benediction? Dearly beloved, know that he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to its completion until the day of Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and a great Thanksgiving day. Mm -hmm.